As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Amen. God's word for our further consideration this morning are the words of our first lesson from Ezekiel. And the, the words that the Lord speaks through Ezekiel here condemn both kings and priests and prophets. Anyone who had any, sh- any sort of leadership in Israel. Because while it's true that kings were tasked with secular authority, in Israel, they also had authority in the spiritual realm and were to be leaders in that area as well. As Moses told them in Deuteronomy, as he spoke concerning any future king they might have, he says, when he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law, taken from that of the priests who are Levites. It is to be with him and he is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow carefully all the words of this law and turn neither to the right nor the left. And yet although the king had such authority, that didn't excuse the priests and prophets from doing their jobs faithfully either. Unfortunately, across the board, there were all too few who served as God desired. And their job review before us this morning in Ezekiel is far from glowing. At the expense of those they had been sent to serve, they looked out for only their own interests, served their own stomachs. Thus we find the Lord talking about them as fat and strong sheep in Israel. Yet while he deals with the abusers, he promises to rescue and restore the abused. To all who were taken advantage of, to those who had been left to fend for themselves spiritually and had to pay the price one way or the other, whether they were faithful or went along with those faithless leaders, to these God promises a new shepherd, a true shepherd, his servant David. He will tend them. He will bring them to good pasture and be their prince. Through him, the Lord promises healing and strength. And this shepherd, David, is none other than Christ, our Savior. Therefore, put your hope and trust in him. For as the one appointed by God to be your shepherd... He is the only one worthy of such things. And the psalmist aptly warns us not to put our trust in mortal men, even though they be princes, because they cannot save. How sad that Israel had to learn this lesson the hard way. Time after time, They were misled by both kings and false prophets. Even the priests, as we read elsewhere in Ezekiel, had abandoned worship of the true God. And in the very temple consecrated for the name above all other names, they had begun to worship the gods of the nations around them. As a result, punishment came swift. And they suffered the the, the ultimate punishment of exile. When we read about these things, as we do this morning in Ezekiel, do we take it to heart? While Paul reminds us that those who bring the word to us are well worthy of honor and support, passages like these show us that there is still a clear limit to that honor and support. The people of Israel, they wanted to be like the nations around them. That's why they asked for a king. Not knowing 
just how poor their spiritual life would become as they indeed did become just like those other nations. And instead of seeing their leaders as servants who were to lead them to and keep them with the true God, they saw their leaders as the end of the line. The leaders were the ones to be followed no matter where they went. And what was their reward? God says they were shoved by these leaders, side and shoulder, and knocked down with their horns. That's the care the Lord describes. Taken advantage of and abused. And we open ourselves to the same type of mistreatment. When we blindly follow those who are meant only to lead us to the one shepherd and point us to him. By God's grace, it doesn't always turn out so poorly. For by God's grace, there are faithful shepherds who continue to point to Christ. Yet if they are not, those sheep that blindly follow should not think that God will excuse them simply because their leader was wicked and faithless. For just as the kings of Israel and the priests were to know the book of the law backward and forward, so was every Israelite. It was the privilege and responsibility given by God that parents were to teach their children, talk about these commands of the Lord, morning, day, and night, at home or on the road, whether you're going to bed or getting up. And such instruction requires that the teacher know his material. That is how we are to guard ourselves against faithless leaders. To equip ourselves to know when certain leaders are no longer worthy of being followed. To know when the leaders themselves might need a little leading and correction. And that's when it can get difficult. Because a leader who does not want to take correction may do as we see described here. Using the side and shoulder and horns to knock down and maintain authority. And keep it his way rather than God's. But listen to the Lord's own comfort should you find yourself in such a circumstance. I will examine my flock and rescue them. I will shepherd them. I will pasture them in good pasture. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will pasture on rich pasture. I myself will shepherd my flock, and I myself will let them lie down. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. And this God has done through His one shepherd, Christ. A shepherd unlike any other. For Christ did not blindly follow the spiritually corrupt leaders of His day. Neither did he faithlessly mislead those who followed him. No zeal for the Lord's house and his teaching consumed our great shepherd. And that is the king you see doing battle for you in the gospel lesson. The king whose righteousness is neither matched nor surpassed, whose righteousness is yours through faith. This is the king we see going and being knocked around willingly. Beaten for proclaiming God's truth. Crucified for declaring himself to be what God had appointed him to be. This is Christ for you. Your great king. Taking your punishment so that you and live. And even after he rose in victory, and all things are subjected to his feet, he 
does not sit back and take it easy. He continues to shepherd. Still He comes and teaches us through His Word. Still He comes in baptism and the Lord's Supper and heals and strengthens His flock. It is with these means of grace that He pastures us with rich pasture, strengthening the weak and binding up the injured. So come to these pastures. Lie down and be at rest. Be at peace. And seek shepherds who are faithful. Go to them as a group of Greeks once came to the disciples of Jesus and say, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. And if ever the one who is Christ's under-shepherd on your behalf begins to stray, go. Go to Him fearing neither shoulder nor horn and remind Him of His task. Remind Him of the one whom He serves and say to Him again, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. And pray that God not only give, but also sustain such faithful under-shepherds in His church. For in Christ, we have the best, the only shepherd, the only king we need. And it is my joy and privilege to say with John the Baptist that he must become greater. I must become less. For Christ alone has redeemed you. And therefore, he alone is worthy to rule as King of kings and Lord of lords, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.